Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate in Final Fantasy podcasting. I am your host, Caleb. And I am Joe. And we have on the show here today, Fun to Mop. Say hello. Hello. How's it going? So he's been a supporter on Patreon for a while now, and we the stars finally aligned, and we were able to get him on here and help us do an episode that otherwise we would probably be reviewing more Daddy of Light. And <laughs> as much as I want to do that, uh, I'd rather do this, to be honest, <laughs> by a lot. But um, we'll still do Daddy of Light, just not this time. Fun to mop. Have you ever watched Daddy of Light? I did. I actually watched it earlier, earlier this year. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to have to get into that at some point in this oh, episode yeah. then. Have you played uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Ring of Fates by any chance? I don't. I own it. Oh, I bought okay. like, all the DS games back when they were on sale last year. Oh, yeah. That was a good sale. It was. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. Um, so my Ring of Fates was a used copy, and I bought it new. Oh, really? Yeah. There was a save file on there. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wow, thanks, Square. I don't. I don't think I got it from Square. I think I got it from Amazon. But someone shrink wrapped that mother. And oh then, really? Oh jeez. Yeah, I had. It was just the weirdest moment for me the other day when I was loading up the game. I was like, "What the hell? Who's, I, yeah, who is this? I'm not there." <laughs> wow, that's funny. <laughs> so uh, I am at Mount Vol, by the way. Like the second time you visit it. Oh, I, I'm only like 40 minutes in. How still. dare you? I haven't touched it. I gotta beat that game in like the next couple of days. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll we'll make this all about fun to mop. We'll we'll uh, stop berating Schweiss on his Ring of Fates. Fairly. Yeah, yeah. We'll uh, see who beats it first, though. We'll, no, nah, you know what? <laughs> Screw that. It's gonna be you because you have all day tomorrow. <laughs> I don't have all day tomorrow. Oh, I have a good chunk of day, and then then stuff to do. Uh, fun to mop. Yes. Let's get into this. First off, tell the audience. Why, what your name means? <laughs> uh, it was a playoff of a band uh, called Phantomas, a uh, band led by Mike Patton of Faith No More. And I also get, used to do maintenance work part time before you know graduated college, got a full time job. So kind of a double meaning there. It's some just some stupid handle I've had for 15 plus years that I'm probably going to take to take to the grave. So, okay. yeah, that'll be on your uh, your gravestone. It'll just be fun to mop. I'm hoping some some celeb contacts me for the handle at some point because they really want it. They but, really want it. Yeah, some some rapper or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need this Twitter. I need this. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the support, man. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, it helps out a lot. It's it's been kind of it's been really nice to have a hobby that's pretty much covered by everything. I mean, we don't use it to buy the games usually, so like it's kind of not, but we could. So it's it's awesome to to have seen it become that, and it's because of guys like you that are willing to help us out. Oh, thank you. A lot of a lot of listening time you guys have uh, given me, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Every minute? I doubt that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, let's get into it here. What was your first exposure to Final Fantasy? Uh, first exposure. Wow. Well, so I'm I'm kind of old school. Um, you know, I grew up with uh, Nintendo and Super Nintendo. Um, so I played the original Final Fantasy first. Um, I don't remember if I played Final Fantasy or Dragon, the original Dragon Quest, which was Dragon Warrior first. But I know I played them both around the same time. Uh, so the first Final Fantasy was definitely the first game, or first one of the first RPGs I played. Um, yeah, so that that was the first, very first one. I want to say the late 80s. I was probably eight or nine years old. And um, I don't know what the appeal is. I really don't. Um, <laughs> maybe just the time it takes, you know, into the game and... The level of difficulty, especially for those those older RPGs, it's just kind of like you had time back then to kind of sink in and like, all right, I need to get to the next town, you know, and that could take a couple of hours, you know, depending on how much you grind. And, you know, I don't, they just kind of, you know, brought me in. So 
So you don't know why you like him. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's how I feel sometimes when I'm no, like, no. what am I doing here? You're on a, you're on a Final Fantasy podcast. <laughs> you're going, I don't know what what the point of this is. Yeah, I just did it. You know, yeah. I mean, compared to like <laughs> other platformers and stuff like that, you know, um, it, the story, the you know, the, the ability to, you know, level up. You know, you're working your way towards something is always fun. Um, characters and all that. So. Uh, have you revisited either of those games recently, Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy? I did. I played uh, Dragon Quest on the uh, the iPhone because it's not available anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually kind of amazed how quick of a game it is. You can actually beat it in like six hours. Oh, nice. I didn't know and, that. And I did play um, Final Fantasy 1 last year. I beat, beat it last year. It uh, The... PlayStation came out with that collection, that yeah. one and two collection, mm-hmm. and yeah, so it was kind of like the re- remastered version of the original NES classic version of Final Fantasy. How did you like that version of the game? Um, I liked it. It wasn't as hard as the original NES version. Um, <laughs> it did have its faults. You know, I forgot there wasn't like any life potions or anything, and you're kind of capped with the potions. So if you don't, you know, if you form your party <laughs> and the party is not heavy on magic or white magic, then you're you're pretty much screwed. I'm looking yeah. at Schweiss's face right now and he's having flashbacks because that's the version he played for the show. Yeah, it was like clear a floor, get to the boss, leave, go back to town. Yeah. My stupid potions that re- revive some health come back. <laughs> And then the bosses, they come back when you leave. So, like, the boss is there again. So I'm like, okay, now I'm stronger so I can do the first two bosses. And then I have to go back to town. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, bull rush through the four bosses, grab the ultimate weapon, then leave and go back to town because I'm not going to do that again and die. And then I finally was, I just annihilated the game. <laughs> but, yeah, it's 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 got some rough edges. But reading up on that first version, the 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 tile thing, I mean, when you're in the groove, you just start hitting your buttons and you you're going you know and then suddenly you kill a guy and then the next you know your next three characters attack air i can't imagine how frustrating that would be um you would just you would just know yeah you'd be like okay and i kind of do this with rpgs anyway i don't know if you guys do but like when i've when i've fought the same enemy enough times i like kind of know around how many hit points it has and so i'll do like an attack like two attacks on that guy and then i if he lives, he lives. If he dies, then I'm going to... The third person will have attacked the next guy while those guys are doing their attack animations. And then I'll do, like, an AoE attack that does, like, a little bit of damage to everybody to just finally kill him off. So that's something that I kind of do anyways, um, is, like, kind of adjust and, like, make sure I'm not hitting someone with a stronger character that has fewer HP. But I can't imagine doing it in that capacity, though, because you might. It's like, oh, I got a critical, sweet. Now I'm gonna miss three times. Like, <laughs> I, man, I'm glad we don't have to deal with that. But which one's better, in your opinion, uh, Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy? Since you just uh, recently played both, we're just talking about the original, the first ones. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I know, I, I know the argument for why Dragon Quest people favor that over the original Final Fantasy. I like the customization in the original Final Fantasy better. I mean, you can play it multiple times and customize your party any way you want. So I would I would definitely have the nod to Final Fantasy there. Okay. How did you play it? Did you do the Death Squad, the uh, two warriors, two um, Red Mage, or did you go like a balanced party that we all should have done? And when I played it back in the day, I did the classic, you know, the warrior, fighter, white mage. And Black Mage. The classic get your butt kicked party? <laughs> for, for a little while, but then you start getting sick. I, I don't know if that's ever true. But. <laughs> and when I played it last year, um, I had Warrior, Fighter, the Thief, who's kind of useless until like the very end of the game, and Red Mage. And I think I've read somewhere where the hardest way to play the game, and I've, I've always wanted to try to do it, but albeit on the original NES version, was with four white mages. Uh, yeah, I've seen YouTube videos. That that <laughs> looks like that'll take way too long. Yeah, it's like a 40-hour <laughs> RPG then. You're like, man, this is a long game. Yeah, if not more than that. <laughs> 
I don't know, man. To level up all those guys to get their strength to a decent place. Yeah, it's like the guy who did the FF7 challenge where he leveled up the 99 before fighting the Scorpion in the Mako reactor. It's like, I mean, you could, but it's sick, man. <laughs> it's sick. You don't get shit for XP in there. <laughs> It's a lot of time. Okay, yeah. so you, you played either Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest first in the 80s. Um, take us from there. All right, so early 90s, you know, I, I remember having both Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. I'm not sure which one I got first, um, but the second Final Fantasy was definitely Final Fantasy IV, which was Final Fantasy II for the Super Nintendo. And that game, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people where that game has a special place in my heart. It's probably the first um, first video game I've played with a really elaborate story, um, great characters. Um, you know, I remember like a year ago going for a walk with my girlfriend and, you know, she's, she's asking me, OK, tell me about this Final Fantasy. And, you know, it, you could sum up the first three games you know, in like 10 minutes, but to actually tell the story of, you know, what goes on in Final Fantasy IV and then all the games come after, you know, it takes, it takes a while. So, you know, we would go for, you know, 20 minute to half hour walk and I'm still telling her, you know, in detail, the story of Final Fantasy IV. So, well, I don't think I've ever been asked that by anyone that I've ever dated. So <laughs> good on you. That's yeah, awesome. well, we were we. She, uh, she wanted to be prepped because we went to KuboCon uh, late last year. So oh she, yeah, she accompanied me. So you know, she she does a little gaming. She's played like Fable, you know, that kind of stuff, and Skyrim, and but um, she never had exposure to Final Fantasy. So I had to kind of explain, you know, that kind of stuff to her. Wait, so you were there? Was it in the uh, the New York one? <laughs> No, 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 no. So this, uh, I, I was, I was inspired. Oh, okay. I was inspired by you guys to actually go to one. Um, so I end up, we end up going to the one in Toronto at the end of last year. Oh, okay, cool. I thought about that for about five seconds going yeah. there, and then I was like, no, <laughs> no not, not, not at that time of year. I'm not going to go to freaking Canada. <laughs> it but, wasn't. It was actually not that bad. Yeah, temperature wise, at least. Yeah. How was that? Did you have? Uh, because I, I know we went to the first one, so it was probably it probably had a little bit rougher edges. Um, kind of his first foray into doing that. I, I probably not his first foray, but his first Kupo Con, uh, the Alex Main guy who yeah. who runs it. Did you have a lot of fun? I mean, was there a lot of stuff to do? Because we were pretty much busy the whole time. Like, yeah, we we had, we had a lot of fun. Um, a lot of running around, especially if you were doing the log, like the quest log. Yeah, yeah. We were we were doing our best, but the, like towards. By the middle, we were like, you know what? I don't need, I don't care, you know. So, so um, but yeah, it, it seemed it seemed to run pretty smoothly. Um, we we had a great time that day, you know. We stayed at the hotel, so like we kind of, you know, halfway through the day, we just kind of went back and rested and came back down. And there was like an after night party, and that was kind of cool too. Oh, did they have dancers? What's that? Did they did they have dancers at the after? The, the late yeah, night party. They did. They did. They had like uh, like an improv troupe that did some like um, uh, what do you call it? Um, improvising. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> imp- 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 improvising, and they had some of the uh, the, the uh, voice actors kind of play along with them because they were there. So. Oh, nice, cool. nice. They uh, for <laughs> I think what was it for us? There was one of them that was like. They they announced that she normally does something else, and I can't I she ugh, fuck can't remember what it was, but I was like dying just just joking about it. Um, normally does I have no because they were like oh she about. usually stars as blah blah blah, and it was like a it was like a dude character, but it was like something that we know from our childhood, and I was like dying. No, it was no great idea. though. Sorry, it was a lot of fun. The this the is one good, this is good pod. It really is. Yeah, you remember that one thing <laughs> that I can't remember that I joked about two years ago? It was good, <laughs> man. It was good. But uh, right, well, the one thing I yeah. the one thing that hurt me though is the bar, man. The, the the bar. It was like six bucks for a yeah for a beer, and I was like, I'll buy one because the the bartender looks kind of lonely because everyone's like, fuck that. I was asleep right at that point. Oh really? Yeah. 
the only thing open in the hotel was like it was on a Sunday, so it was a Starbucks. So we just went out around the block and went to a restaurant in the middle of the day. You know, had a couple drinks there. Yeah, yeah, they were all good. But I think you get, I think we got like comped one drink. But and then they had like a quizzo Final Fantasy during the uh, the after night party, which was super hard. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. So, we but, were terrible. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty much all into going. You know to jersey next year i'm not far i um, live just outside philadelphia so oh cool nice nice well we might see you then yeah we're kind of planning on going so yeah we were also planning on going to um 14 fest that didn't happen yeah we got locked out uh you know what sucks about that though joe what i looked at it and it was um you had to have an active account between january and march of this year at some point okay or no, it was January and April or May, and like so, there was no way I could have gotten in queue to order my own ticket. Like it was just impossible because I didn't have it two months prior to when they went on sale. And I was like, God damn it, Square! Like, what the shit, man? People, other people want to go to this convention. People that don't play fourteen all the time, like you elitist <laughs> bastards. Like, can I just go and have fun no, no. and not have played the new content? Like, and are they still meeting in the same place? Only like three thousand people or something. Yeah, it's no, the same yeah. place. I, it sucks because we got in so yeah. easily the first time, and then since then they've been like, no. <laughs> Maybe they heard the podcast. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. And they're yeah. like, you guys think it's easy to get in, huh? All right. So Final Fantasy Four was kind of the big one for you, I'm assuming? It's like yeah, the one uh, that got it, you into it, the it, series. It is. It's it's the one I, that I always come back to when I you know get back into gaming, and I just kind of pop in and play. Um yeah, it's got a, like I said, it's 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 definitely got the nostalgia factor for me, you know, and I'm you know, not afraid to say it. So No, it's a good game, man. Um I mean I, I think both me and Schweiss rank a lot of the other FFs above it, but I it really when you play the games in a row, I mean that's the one that just like kicks up the the quality. Yeah, <laughs> by a lot. By a lot. And that's one that kind of modernizes the series in a lot of yeah. ways. That's like, okay, you have FF4 and everything that follows FF4, except for, I guess, except for 5, but 5 in a lot of ways, too, with the battle system and, like, just the the way the game plays. Um, 4 really sets the, sets the bar, and it kind of sets the standard of what to expect from Final Fantasy going forward. Um, 5 is more of a callback to 3 in a lot of ways, but... Yeah, with four, I mean, you've got the specific characters with their preset jobs, so you can't really move them around. Um, so it has kind of a job system, but it's character-based. And most of the rest of the series follows that. I mean, FF10, FF9, you can't really change the characters at all. You just have to adapt and use them accordingly and find good ways to make them more powerful and more useful. So it's it's a big game. And when we played it, it was like, wow, this is this is way better than anything we played for the show so far, like a million times better. <laughs> so like the the whole like, oh it's it's good, but it's just not as good as the other games, like really one through three are nowhere near as good as four. So is as much shit as we give it, it's still like it's still a pretty damn good game. And 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 back then, like I didn't know it was the fourth in the in the, the franchise. So it was a it was a major leap from the first game yeah. to what I thought was the second game. So. Yeah, you're you're just like holy shit, like, <laughs> damn. It's it's got an underrated soundtrack. I think it's got one of uh, you know the best Final Fantasy soundtracks as far as music. I like the the love triangle there with Cecil, Kane, and Rosa. I think Kane is probably one of my favorite characters and all the games um especially when i play the after years too because um you know he, he becomes the paladin as well and he, he's got the white magic and yeah that's he's that's, he's fucking awesome in that game i love the ability to just like leap in the air and you don't get hit with damage so when you're at the end boss and he and he rolls out that big bang you know it it decimates everybody else, but it doesn't hit Kane because he's still up in the air somewhere, <laughs> you know, and then comes down and, you know, knocks for like 2000 hit points. So. Yeah. Good stuff. So what did you do after four? I mean, I know we didn't get five. Did for... you just play all the games in a row as they came out? No. Well, the next one would have been six, which was three for super Nintendo. Um, 
So I grew up in Philadelphia proper. I grew up in like on a city block. And, you know, naturally, when you kind of grow up on a city block, you become friends with whatever kids are on the same block as you. So I had a buddy of mine, um, a couple of years older than me, that we, we kind of bonded over gaming, um, played a lot of Super Nintendo era games. I remember we battled a lot with in Mario, the original Mario Kart, which was a lot of fun. Um, he ended up getting six before – or three before me. Um, and I remember days just going over his house, him playing that game, me watching him. And it's probably the first time I actually watched somebody play and was just enamored with the story. Huh. So um, – I've never been enamored with someone else playing. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you could find some joy <laughs> in that experience. So you know, later I don't. You know, the timeline's fuzzy. I don't remember how how much later, but you know, I remember just like asking my parents for the game because I wanted to play it, and my dad, for whatever reason, saying no. And you know, I remember getting very upset, and he he caved, and we eventually went and got got the game, and it was you know one of the greatest gaming experiences I've ever had to this day was playing, you know, Final Fantasy VI. Uh, I believe it. That's a great game. Uh, we'll have to get into your rankings later on. I want to see how you rank it up against four. Uh, how, um, what was seven like when that came around? Well, here, here's the thing, and here's where I'm going to kind of deviate from probably a lot of other people. Okay. Um, I, I was... Uh, kind of always like a Nintendo loyalist and I didn't get into the original era of PlayStation. I kind of came a little later. I got a PlayStation two a couple, many years later and I probably played 10 before I played seven. Oh really? Wow. Damn. Yeah. You just said, no, you know, they, they, they betrayed Nintendo <laughs> and then they, you couldn't yeah. handle it. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It just maybe I had too many video game consoles as a teenager. My parents are like, choose one. Yeah, and so, then they made you shoot the other one. Like they had, <laughs> they like had them out, out out back, and they just gave you the shotgun. They're like, which one lives, boy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so I pro. So I played. Uh, so. We'll get back to seven, I think, but I played ten before I played seven when played PlayStation Two error, and that that was a great experience, and that that was a great game. Um, what did you think of the uh, like the voice act like at the time? Because obviously, me and Schweiss yeah. both these yeah. are retro games to us. I mean, we went back, we played these games as games as old games. So. Yeah, I mean, we um, played them before too, but yeah. I, I never played except for thirteen. I was I oh, was really? always behind. You yeah. never played ten. Never played these games oh, wow. like as they were coming out. Yeah, okay. Uh, up until thirteen, um, so I'm wondering like that kind of seismic shift from the last game that you played was FF six slash three. What made you decide to pick up FF ten in the first place? Um, it just, it was, it was marketed pretty heavily at the time. Um, you know, it was, it was the 10th game in the franchise, you know, so the X it's, it's pretty banner, you know, time for a franchise. I don't think any video game franchise at the time had 10 video games in the series out. So, um, and uh, as far as the voice acting, I mean, it, it didn't really bother me. I thought the actual actors were spot on, but of course the, the, the script, the dialogue was kind of clunky, of course, and we, we riff on it all the time, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't really have a problem with that. Um, story was super weird, but you know, I mean, what final fantasy story isn't weird, to be That's honest true. with you. So. Okay. Well then have you, have you gone back and played the games that you quote unquote missed? I did, yes. You so did. Okay. I found out that the PS2 was backwards compatible with original PlayStation games. So I went back and I kind of accumulated all the games I missed out on. So there was the, uh, I think five came with uh, four in a collection, and I bought seven, eight, and nine. 
And yeah, so I've had I've had all the PlayStation games, you know, played them on the PS2. So probably the next game in the series that I played after 10 was uh, Final Fantasy V, actually. So I kind of went backwards a little bit. Um, and that that was a cool experience. Uh, it didn't really... It, 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 because I never played 3 until maybe last year, I didn't really... It was, it was kind of foreign to me, the job system, a little bit, because, you know, as you said, the the jobs are pretty much set for a lot of the games where there wasn't really much customization, you know? Um, so that one was, was fun to play from that perspective, a little frustrating too, because, you know, you have to make decisions as far as what, what classes you want to choose to go with, with certain characters. And I'm, I'm pretty traditional. Like I need, you know, I need a traditional warrior, traditional, you know, somebody who can steal, and then have you know some some magic. I didn't really play around with a lot of the other, um, like Berserker or the Time Mage, um, which is why I really want to try to do the uh, the, the four job Fiesta. Yeah, yeah. Next year, so you know I kind of missed it this year because I'm got such a backlog. But it's still going. It ends on <laughs> August nineteenth or something like that. Okay. I I signed up, but I haven't started. So <laughs> way to go, Shway. Yeah. Disappoint the entire community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three does a good job of introducing it, I think, and it's kind of important to play three first because I don't remember for sure, but five, I don't think lends itself to the new jobs quite as well. Because you remember in three where it's like, hey, here's a new job, and then the next boss is like, oh, hey, did you use that new job? Because if not, you're gonna have a hard time here. And I usually never did because I was trying to get really deep into whatever job I had decided that I was gonna run through um and i don't remember five doing that quite as much i remember five being more of like oh wow there's some really crazy abilities way later on in this job i'm gonna stick with this for a while and grind it out i think there were jobs that went against bosses better than others but yeah i don't think it was like a requirement like it was in three yeah yeah. uh to switch over but three i felt three is five light Uh, i think Three doesn't do as good of a job as five does. No. Like in general with the job system. There's some cool shit you can do though, but yeah. Um so I think it's a good warm up to the to the system in five and it kinda helps you prepare. But remember we didn't have three up until like two thousand six here. That's true, yeah. <laughs> so there was no warm up. You got the PlayStation <laughs> yeah. you got the PlayStation uh, FF anthology thing and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so uh so you're kind of stuck there. Um, so is, so after FF10, you went back and played the other ones. Where did I mean? Did they hold up in your opinion? Like was seven the groundbreaking game that everybody said at the time? Well, I, I can't really say because I haven't finished it personally. Oh um, wow, okay. Yeah. So again, this is where I deviate from a lot of people. Um, I for whatever reason I've I've always started it, but I've never really you know played it through. Um, I think if somebody would have told me that the game is not all Midgar, I probably would have labored through. Um, it just seemed a lot of very de- like dark and depressing. Um, that is so, most of the game is dark and depressing, but uh, it is not all Midgar. Yeah, it, yeah. it does end. <laughs> yeah, so um, you know, I, I picked up all the games again on on the PS Vita, so I've, I do have a game going. Um, I'm right at the Golden Saucer, so I don't know where that is in the, in the stage of the game, but I did make it out of Midgar finally, and I do plan on finishing the game this year, um, and we'll we'll see how it ranks with with the others. But you know, I I, I just I've stopped and started that game so many times that I don't know. It just it doesn't. It seems like a chore to me sometimes, where I'm not having fun with it, and I want to have fun with it because I know how great and how important it is but i feel like time too much time has gone by where it's not going to probably live up to you know like a six or a ten um for me so but we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes again it's not going to be in my rankings because i haven't finished it but it so far it's, it's been pretty interesting and i know how important you know that that game is and the characters I promise I'll finish it before the remake comes out. Oh, there you go. That's good. <laughs> yeah, ten years from now. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, so I'm wondering if if maybe 
some of the reason why it's not as fun to you is maybe the fact that everybody says it's the greatest one ever, right? Yeah. I, I wonder if, like, because of its reputation, it just feels like it's like like homework playing yeah. it. Um, I watch a lot of movies that are considered, you know, great. I guess like because I got all those lists of like top one hundred whatever of all time, and yeah. I'll watch those movies. And sometimes they'll start like like putting it in, like you know, getting like booting it up. It'll start to feel like it's about to be homework, and like. I have to trick myself into being like, this isn't homework. This is fun. It's great. It's a movie. And just enjoy it for what yeah. it is. And let's not worry about like everything else that has been heaped on with this. Um, and maybe that might make it a little funner if you can block that out. But uh, it's a good game at the, at the very least. Uh, I think uh, Schweiss, where, is it number one on your ranking? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So Schweiss is disappointed in you. but uh, Yeah, I, I get you, though. I... <laughs> I haven't beat the remaster on PS4, and I started it. I just I don't want to. I don't want to play it. You don't want to play it? No, I don't. <laughs> but FF12's remaster, I'll play the shit out of that. Oh, did you play FF12 or FF11? Uh, no, no, I did buy the Zodiac Age last year, um, and I plan on playing that after. Well, I, you know what? I don't know. I'm probably gonna put a poll out on Twitter to see what my next game in the in the, the mainline FF will be um, after I beat seven, because I'll have four of them to go outside of the MMO, so. Nice. Um, yeah, it's getting harder and harder to guarantee that we could get people to play the MMOs with you. 14 is an easy, like, yeah, if you join, you'll have help. 11. I think we got an email from someone who started 11, didn't we? I think so, yeah. Crap. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Someone contacted us saying, hey, I'm doing 11. Um, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what the email was oh, about, man. though. For me, it's like, uh, good good luck, man. Good fucking luck. <laughs> just, just listen to our episodes. We'll tell you what you need. Do you want to beat all of them? Just curious. Uh, all the mainline um, non-MMOs I do, but um, I'm, 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 I'm for the single-player experience. I'm not really into... I mean, as of right now, I'm not into the, the multiplayer experience so i kind of pl- play leisurely i kind of play at my own pace and i don't like being held to you know playing with other people at set times and stuff like that so yeah you if there's ever a free trial i think 14 does a free trial don't they i think uh, you should try 14 it's okay. a very single player multiplayer okay um in the sense that you have your main story quests and like most of it is you just doing like nonsensical shit like hey go bring this here go collect sap from these trees while enemies are hitting you and you don't need uh buddies with you for most of it you can solo a lot of that game and it's it, it's a very interesting mmo and in the fact that you don't need help until you need help like it's like you oh there's a boss you fight. don't need friends in your queue waiting on you in a dungeon you don't need that you don't yeah because they have a master queue where everybody jumps into and you join up with people it's easier if you have people you can call upon and say like hey i'm gonna do a dungeon now do you guys want to join up and we have people like that um and we have people that will do that with you in our uh our free company because what happens is like um, if you're doing like a level five dungeon and everyone's level, I think it's 60 now is the max, something like that, or 70, yeah. one of those. And they're level 70. If they join you, they'll still get rewards because um, it'll drop their level down to whatever the the max level is for the dungeon. So they'll be all gimpy, shitty versions of themselves and they'll run through the dungeon. They'll get rewards. You'll get rewards and you'll get rewarded with more story. And then everybody moves on and goes their own separate ways. So. It's a pretty it's a pretty single player thing and that's one of the things we docked it for to be honest especially compared to 11 where it's like 11 it's was this, you need people. Yeah, it's fucking this brutal wasteland and like you everyone is going to kill you. Like if you don't have a party, you're dead, man. And uh it was horrifying yet refreshing to, <laughs> to know that you actually <laughs> needed the people around you, but in 14 it's like you just you need them every once in a while. So if you're going to play one of them that's the one I would recommend if you're preferring a single player experience, not wanting to wait on anybody because you can do it on your own. Fourteen time. would be a good one to to do when you finish the rest of the series. <laughs> yeah, it's a it refer, references yeah. a lot of stuff, um, and that's why we've gotten a lot of people into fourteen that way that have said like, "Oh, I don't play the MMOs," um, and I think one of them was I feel like Gabranth. 
didn't play it until like we said we were going to play it or some someone. And now he, I know he's like one of the best dragoons or best whatever he is right now, like in the game. So he's like obsessed with it, like it's become this huge thing for him, and he loves it. And I don't been... know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I yeah, it was a good thing for like. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, it was good for initially, but then when it stayed that way, I was like, oh shit, dude, are you are you okay? You're like, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> So can't can't talk must must play you know uh, but you're the one who gave him the heroin yeah that's right and I feel bad <laughs> that I made him an addict but uh, a lot of people have gone in and they really have enjoyed fourteen and there were a lot of them that a lot of individuals that like refused to play the MMOs so um, I would give it a try especially because there are free trials out there um, I'm pretty sure it's free to a certain level as well they started doing that. Um, I might be wrong about that, but I know there's a way to try the game out without paying for it. Um, and it's, it's see if it's something you like. But yeah, like Joe said, I would wait. Um, I would wait till you finish the rest of the games because there are a lot of like fun references to the previous Final Fantasy games that you wouldn't really get if you didn't play. Well, let's see which ones he has. Uh, did Did you play thirteen? No, I didn't. No. Okay. Uh, how about fifteen? Uh, I played a little of it. I haven't beaten it yet. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Damn. Okay. The the, yeah. the, the two con uh, the two like uh, opposing forces in the series where people like hate it or love it. You, you haven't finished them. <laughs> yeah. See, the, the reason why I'm more of a retro gamer too is because to some extent I, I get motion sickness playing these 3D games. So that's why I think I'm more of a 2d gamer fan um so I'm, I'm kind of that's why i'm slowly working my way up to the more recent games so i want to get the older ones out of the way and then kind of see how my head fares with like the newer games because mm-hmm. i know i put in i put in 13 for like 15 20 minutes and i just well, for whatever reason i just i don't know i just i couldn't take it as far as the motion and everything that was going on, and it's a really fast-paced fighting system. So it is, yeah. I, so, uh, I did you ever listen to Nude Clan? Oh yeah, oh, okay, absolutely. All right, so you know, I got motion sickness on uh, Bounty Hunter. Yeah, you should try that game out. See what happens. That, that's to you. an old game, though. That's what made me. That made me mad about Bounty. Bounty Hunter made me a little like really motion sickness, and I had to take Dramamine in order to play that game. Um. And it worked. The drama, I mean, worked for me. Um, but it made me sleepy, too. So that was... <laughs> it's counterintuitive. <laughs> it's kind of bad. Uh, and Doom, the newest Doom game, when I first booted it up, made me a little nauseous. But then I was fine after that. So I get, I get where you're coming from. I've, I've had a, like I've had two games that have made me motion sick. I think Doom has, like, an intended... There's a setting that, like, gives you the blur, and I wonder if you would have turned that off if you would have been fine. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's, like, certain smoothness of camera and speed. It'll make me nauseous. But I don't I don't know what it is, because I've played other games that have been sort of that way, and it, it never bothered me. But, uh, I mean, I'm sorry to hear that. Have you, uh... I mean, have you tried... <laughs> Have you tried drugging yourself in order to play Final Fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. Uh, um, tried hydrating myself and just, you know, getting up, taking a walk, clear my head. But no, I have not tried drugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> uh, I suggest Dramamine because uh, I, I would get sick on the train. Like, yeah. I would have to take a train like two hours every day or something. I would get sick every time. And... Uh, that's what I realized I needed. I, I know the, the pill. The pill for me is Dramamine, but there's like boning and stuff. Like, I'm sure you know that. Um, but, you know, it worked for me with Bounty Hunter. I was able to play that horrible game yeah. uh, with the with the Dramamine. So, I don't know. You know if, you, if you feel like doing a marathon of something. Yeah, just uh, look at it yeah, so you don't get think, sick. Think about it. I've never, I've never been sick from something like that, though. No. No, I get irritated with, like... TVs that have low refresh rates, but it doesn't make me ill or anything. No, it's, no, that's not the same. <laughs> it makes me yeah. mad. I don't do 3D movies anymore because I just it just fucks with my head. So, did you did you try The Hobbit in 48 frames? Um, no, I did not. Oh. Uh, the oh. last actually, the camera movement and it wasn't three. I didn't see it in 3D, but the camera movement and what's the Leo uh, Bear movie called again? 
Oh, uh, uh, Revenant. Yeah, yeah. So there's like a there's like a scene where there's like a single track where I think the Native Americans are they're fighting with the Native Americans and it just it really screwed up with my head. Oh boy, the tracking of the uh, of that shot. But I remember the last movie, 3D movie that I got really sick uh, was Inception. Actually, so. I'm like, I'm not going to 3D movies anymore. First of all, it's a waste of money. Like, oh, it is. It still is. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, ooh, look how sparkly we are. It's I, like, I think I've said this like nine times. There are four great 3D experiences out there. You know what? Yeah, and one of them there's, I agree with. There's Avatar, Life of Pi, Hugo, and now I, I can't remember the The space one. The Oh, yeah, Gravity. Gravity, yeah. That was great. Yeah. But then otherwise, you're good. <laughs> the thing is, is like... <laughs> Yeah, with 3D. And those are not at theaters anymore, so no, there's no yeah, point either. Not. And the the thing with 3D is, like, if you're interested in seeing the background ever, like, you can't. It's like, here's the main guys, here's the characters, look, they're 3D, and, like, everything else looks like shit, and it's like, those guys look really cool. But it's it's just so... Oh God. <laughs> or if it's the Clash of the Titans that I had no choice but to see in 3D, you're just really shiny. Everything's just shiny. I'm like, this is not 3D. Like, Pitch Perfect 2's trailer had, like, five times more 3D in it than this entire shit movie that I'm fucking sitting through here. And it's, it's like, five bucks more. Like, what am I doing? It's terrible. So, yeah, you're not missing out on anything even now, even years after Inception. It's still a waste of time. Um, okay. So, let's see. The ones that you have played are... Did you play two or three? I did. Yes, I played. So I played two with that uh, the PS collection I got with one. Um, it's not one of my favorites. That's for sure. Um, I, you've guys covered it. The, the leveling system sucks. Um, does it now? <laughs> it does. It. You know. It. I think the problem is I get too strong, and then when I'm trying to get my character's hit points, I'm just killing them. Oh yeah, so, did the same thing. Exact yeah, same so thing. Um, didn't really care much for the story. Um, I didn't really. I honestly, I didn't like the. I, I kind of feel like the representation of the characters in the menu screen are are weird looking as well. So that that kind of puts me off for some reason. They're just really oafish looking for some reason. Yeah, um, especially that uh, that one guy. Yeah. Gal, not Gal. No, Gal's from six. Oh, shit, his name changes based oh on the version. Oh my gosh, what is his name? Not Sirion, but the other one, right? Yeah, the other guy, Guy or something, or Gus, yeah. Gus and Guy. Gus. <laughs> Those are the two versions. <laughs> Gus is like a moron. <laughs> they look like cavemen. So. They do, yeah, and he talks like one too. He has like four lines, and they're all like <laughs> terrible. Gus, Gus. Yeah, yeah, that's what he he just whispers his own name all day. He's like a Hodor character, just Gus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh so we feel you we feel you and it is so everything about two just kind of irks you then it's like the, the way they look and the way the the, the job system yeah. the, the system is like I, I like the fact that it's open like if you if you go across a bridge to the wrong like to the wrong area you get wiped out pretty quickly so you really have trial and error as far as where to go and what to do but that also can be a pain as well if you don't have anything to guide you or if, you, um, or if you don't have any money for the yeah. hotel stay. <laughs> Just like the idea that the more hurt you are, the more the hotel costs. That drives yes. me nuts. Oh. It's it's kind of yeah, it's kind of similar in vain to a, to a game I'm playing now on the Vita called Fantasy Star Two, where if a character dies uh, in order to revive them, you actually clone them, which is kind of interesting for the game because it's more sci fi. Uh, the more they die, the more it co- the more it costs to, to to clone them every time. So you know you have to make sure that you don't have your characters die off because it's really going to cost you. And money's hard to come by in this game as well. Yeah. Oh, you know what I think would be fun if uh, if if it was kind of like when you're doing a copy machine and you make copies of a copy of a copy and it, like it gets shittier and shittier the mm-hmm. more copies you make. If, like, you had to clone the clone, so, like, eventually your character is just, like, a really soupy, like, shitty version of what they once were, and they have, like, half of the capacity, like, the mental capacity is, like, 
almost none. They have none of their abilities that they once had. They're like basically useless meat shields at that point. I think that would be a fun a fun game mechanic where like they just get cloned into into uselessness and you're like, Fuck God, this game is sick. Uh <laughs> I think that would be beautiful. But that's something that Nier Automata did and I thought it was kinda cool where like they upload their memories and their existence into another robot version of them and then they just like come back. Yeah, I've, um, I've never played any of the Fantasy Star games. I'm yeah. interested in trying those. Yeah, they're yeah. real uh I think they're one of those like I don't know, like super nerdy RPGs. It seems like cuz there's only like 10 people that I know that have I played know. them. Tell us fun to mop are they a super nerdy RPG? Yeah, is it or, like a deep... or just a regular nerdy RPG? No, yeah. No. I would say regular nerdy. Regular um, the nerdy. second one's pretty pretty tough, pretty hard. Um, the dungeons are really really confusing. Where you actually, if you're not using a god, you actually have to draw draw it out to kind of figure out where you're going. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could, I think you can play the, the second, third, and fourth on that uh, Sega collection that just came out for the PS4. So, I mean, you can play them if you want. Maybe someday. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, what are some of the... What are the... Uh, I mean, you said Fantasy Star that you're playing now. I mean, what are some of the other like RPG series that you, you like? I'm just wondering, as a gamer, like you said retro games. Like uh, Besides Final Fantasy, like what else do you enjoy? Just curious. Uh, I've got a heavy, heavy mix of like pl- like side-scrolling platformers with RPGs, pretty much. Um, you know, I just got the Mega Man collection, so I'm kind of going through those. Uh, you know, Zelda's fun, and I'm kind of kind of doing the same thing with like uh, Final Fantasy. I'm kind of working my way, you know, starting with the originals and kind of working my way up to Breath of the Wild, which I'll get to eventually. I'll probably play that around the same time as I get to 15. In all honesty, so <laughs> Final Fantasy 15, that is. You, but, should, you should just start a podcast to go through all of them. Yeah, yeah. that's the only exactly. way to do it, as far yeah, as I well, know. Too many other people are doing it, and <laughs> I appreciate them. Thank you know, you. I'd rather I'd rather listen to you know, as far as than do my own thing. So, uh, we mentioned before the show started, um, the only spinoff that you beat was the FF4 sequel, After Years. <laughs> I'm wondering how do you feel about that as a big FF4 fan? I, I really liked it, um, and I, I think until it gets to the very end. Um, I like the episodic nature. I, that was a good change of pace. Um, the only thing I didn't like about that was if you wanted to do the questing um, after you completed the story, you couldn't combine all of your stories to do the final story until you were done. Otherwise, you would lose you know chance out on some good weapons and stuff. So. Um, so that, that took some time for me because I'm, I'm the way I play, like I have to do everything. So I, I take my time with these games and try to get everything done, uh, because who knows when I'm going to play it again. So, um, you know, I did that with nine. Definitely. I think my, my final save time was like 85 hours or something on, on nine and 10. It was, I think it was 10 was like over a hundred hours. So did you so, on nine? Did you do all the hot and cold and everything? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did everything in nine except for the jump rope, obviously. And um, <laughs> I think there's like a there's like a weapon you get if you if you beat the game or get through the game pretty quickly, which yeah. is not my mo. So, um, but I, I think outside of that, I did everything else in the game. And those 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 games were actually a lot of fun in nine. Uh, compared to some of the other Final Fantasy, so yeah, especially the one that came after it, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> for as much as I love Ten, um, I still hate the fact that it makes you want to pl- makes you play bl- Blitzball. Yeah. Oh, and that's not even the worst <laughs> mini game that it has. Is the sad part? It's yeah. far from the terror that <laughs> you experience in those fucking races. Those balloons. Yeah. And- oh my god. Oh my god, so painful. Did you uh did you guys get all the Elbed primers when you played? <laughs> um yes, eventually. <laughs> okay. Uh so I've played I played ten twice last year. Um there's one fucking Elbed primer I cannot find for the life of me. So I look at I look it up. I forget what letter it is too, but 
it's not where it's supposed to be in the game. It's, it's the one that's supposed to be like right next to the Makalania agency, and it's not there. So huh, it's huh. like it's like the one thing that's not allowing me to get that trophy uh, in the game because I can't for the life of me find this one primer that's supposed to be where it is, but it's not there. So um, I end up playing the game again on the expert level grid get to the same point, still can't find it. So I have no idea what's going on with the game I have, but it is frustrating. Wow, are you do you have everything else done? No, not not for the life not for the remaster, no. Okay. Like I haven't beaten the the dark aeons or anything like that. Um and I don't think I've caught all the monsters yet either. Um but you know, I, I was I was working my way through the trophies, but then, you know, after that it just kind of soured me and I'm like, you know what? And I know, I know that's the exact opposite of you, but I'm just like, you know, forget trophies. I don't care. You know, I'll I'll, I'll be in a game to a point that I feel fit and then I'm done with it. So. Yeah, I spent – this is this is disturbing, but I think I spent about 40 hours on Wolfenstein 2 in the last week. It's insane. And I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, but I don't think it's worth the amount of time I put into it. But I've got trophies to grab, so I, I did it. Um, and that's the, that's how I felt with ten because I beat ten, and I, I realized near the end I was like, oh my god, there was one missable primer, one in the game, the normal game that's not glitched like yours, and it's in home, and home is blown to pieces. And the shitty part is, is every other primer besides this one, I can't remember which one it is. I don't care. Fuck it, it it's dead to me. <laughs> the one primer is it's the one that gets blown up. Like, everything else you can find in the desert, like, home blows up. Oh, there's primers in these locations after home, if you didn't grab them in home. So I grabbed the wrong one when I was in there. I was like, oh, got it, sweet. And then I, like, looked at the guide a few hours later, and I was like, oh, I fucking grabbed the wrong one, man. So I had to play the game again up to home, grab that primer, load up my other save, and, like, combine my primers to get the platinum. And, like... That added another 15 hours to an already 135-hour yeah. experience, and I was like, dude. Yeah, you said primer, and I saw I saw uh, something go through twice. <laughs> yeah, a lot of life gone. <laughs> and I honestly, I'm never going to 100% that game again, ever. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Unless they, like, released a new version that had separate trophies, which they didn't do for the PS4, where it, like, combines them, I'm, I'm probably never going to do it again, like... It's just not going to happen. Same thing with FF12. After all the hours I put into Zodiac, I was like, I've done this too many times now. Twice is too much. 200% a game. So I, it is kind of the opposite of me, but I also kind of feel it. I feel where you're <laughs> yeah. coming from. It's like, I, don't, I just want to do this anymore. Like, it's fucked now, and it's for something that I didn't even do. Like, the games just, just can't handle the fact that there's a primer that should be right here. <laughs> Uh, have you seen any of the movies? Yeah, I saw the one. So I got that the collector's edition of fifteen. And I did watch that movie because it it pre it's like a prequel to the actual events of fifteen. So I figured I wasn't going to spoil anything if I watched it. Um, you know, it it is what it is. It's not really you know a great movie. So, um, so you never saw Advent Children? Uh, no, no. Advent Children is it is. Seven? Is that seven? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I haven't beaten seven yet, so I don't want to watch uh, okay. that I, af- until after I'm done the game. I totally watched that movie without <laughs> beating seven. A lot of people did. Uh, seven at when in the time when I became a Final Fantasy fan, it was before it was on the PlayStation Three network, and uh, the game, the physical copy of the game, cost like seventy dollars. Yeah, it was kind of rare for a little while. It was rare for for like three years it was a pretty rare game and it was right right when i wanted to play it and yeah so I, I i watched the movie anyway and then i was like i don't get it but i yeah it was all right yeah the sad <laughs> part about that movie is you still kind of don't get it no after no you beat not the really game, you're like i don't know after you listen to those short stories which we talked about on the show then you get then it. you get it um and then you read the last one and you want to blow your brains out because it doesn't add anything but Yes. Stupid alternate universe. Yes. So the only one that you've watched is Kingsglaive? That's right. Oh. Ouch, man. That's the worst one. Not that it, so- not that any of them are great, but uh that one's the worst one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. 
It was kind of weird going to KupoCon, too, and actually meeting some of the voice actors for a game I haven't really played much yet. But, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of interesting. The, the king was there. Um, the guy they mo- actually modeled the look at and who did the voice in the actual video game, not the movie. Because I think the movie was Sean Bean, if I'm Sean, not mistaken. Yeah, Sean Bean yeah. was the movie. I don't think they could have got Sean Bean to go to the, the con. <laughs> yeah. Not for that. Not for that game or movie. It's like <laughs> Black Mark. It's like at least I died. At least I I was killed as per my contract. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I always thought that was funny. Like when they got the guy who uh, who played the one character that Joe and I just find insufferable in that Kingsglaive. The uh, the guy who breaks his leg. Like he was at one of the Koopo cons, and I'm like, man, I'm glad I'm not there because like I don't think I could resist not being an asshole about that character. And, like, people love it. They're like, oh, this guy's the best character in the movie. And I'm like, I kind of like him more than the main because he actually has an arc. He has, like, a a, a character yeah. development. The main guy's just like, I'm a good guy the whole time, you know? But I, I, I still think the racist cop has the best story and the best arc in the entire movie. But, like, yeah, it's weird because they're, they're, like, semi-glorified by being at these cons. And I'm like, man, I just... I hate your character in this movie. Like I just I fucking hate it. And like I don't think your performance is good. I don't think the script is good. Like I don't know where the fault lies, but I I am glad that they weren't there when I was there. Except for the king. King Regis in the Come game. On, he was pretty awesome. You wouldn't have gone up to him and been an asshole. <laughs> like you're I, I wish I could, but yeah, I, I'm not usually that rude. Actually. <laughs> like I would think about it. I would definitely think about it, but I don't think I'd do it. Because yeah. it's like Again, like we don't know whose fault it is. I mean, what did you think, Fun to Mob, about the uh, the pain pills? How the pain pills were handled? Yeah, yeah. Did, did you enjoy our commentary on that? Like, <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, he was actually at the uh, Toronto Coupacon too. So he was he was a nice guy. Um, he was a nice guy. Yeah, Schweiz lay off him. <laughs> yeah. I'm but, sorry. Uh, I know the the one there was the one voice actor who's one of the. Um, and I don't know. It's the it's the one on fifteen uh, with the glasses, and I think he cooks Ignis. Yeah. Ignis, yeah. So Ignis was there, and uh, my saving grace was the fact that he was an actor in an episode of Supernatural. So my girlfriend bonded with him over that because uh, I had like go. nothing to say to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, they, they're. I don't know. It's tough, it's and it's. Tough. It's weird because, like, voice actors, they have these almost underground communities of, like, big-time fans. And that's something we kind of noticed at uh, at the KupaCon we went to because Ray Chase was there. Yeah. And, like, we only know Ray Chase from 15, really. Like, he's not – and then we played – I think we played Nier Automata, like, shortly after, and he's in that, too. And he's in a bunch of stuff. But there were a lot of, like, big-time Ray Chase fans that were there. And I was like, man, this is, like, a whole community that I know almost nothing about, like, these – fans of voice actors and their works because it's such a it's kind of a small thing and you'd have to they'd have to be doing a lot of similar works to be noticed by some of these audience members but yeah there were a lot of people that were like oh yeah Ray Chase is awesome and I'm like yeah I mean he was good in the game but I don't really know any of his other stuff you know like and so it's this it's this weird it's this weird thing that I just have never experienced I've never like been into unless like James Arnold Taylor went to one and I know him obviously and or like uh uh DiMaggio yeah some of those big guys that have been around for a long time and in TV shows and stuff like that like them I would know but it's I just think it's crazy that it's, some people get so into it that they they're like on a they they know that person's name you know and it's weird um <laughs> especially when they're from like they like span multiple genres and it's not like he's just in RPGs like the Ignis guy, your girlfriend knew him from a freaking episode of Supernatural. Like, yeah, it's. I wonder. I wonder if anybody went there because he was. They live him in Supernatural, and then he was going to be there. And like, I don't know what Final Fantasy is, but this guy. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's fun. Um, All right. Well, um, do you have your your rankings? I do. Yeah, lay it on. All us. right, lay it on us, please. All right. So six is definitely number one. Um, okay. It's, it's it's the best game in the franchise. Um, I really like, um, you know, the story's amazing. 
The music's amazing. Uh, all the characters, you know, except for like the two one side ones you get at the very end, like Gogo and uh, the the Yeti. I forget his name, but oh they all have a play in the story. And I, I like the customization of the weapons and armor. I think there's like five slots plus you can add on two additional relics. Um, so it, it made kind of the end game when I was kind of whittling down all my inventory and trying to get everybody, you know, as far as what, what were going to be their set weapons and armor, uh, for the end game that it was very complicated. It was very, a lot of work put into kind of figuring it out and going to the Coliseum to kind of win some better stuff. Uh, but six is by far the best game I think in the series. So by and, far, okay. Yes. Uh, after that, so here's where, do I go with my head or do I go with my heart? So I, I'm going to say four is my second favorite game. Um, it's still a banner game for me. Um, it's still, it's like I said, it's the one I always come back to. I've played three different versions of the game. Um, I've played the original, um, Super Nintendo. I played the PlayStation version I've, and I played the complete collection of that game. So I think it's the only video game I've played three different versions of and i actually do have the ds version as well and i am going to get through that but i hear it's very very hard apparently the ds version so yeah i think that's what craig said it was a little harder than the other one it's like 10 hours longer because of it yeah i think so so after that um i'm going to say 10 um is number three uh i think it's it's an outstanding game um very memorable characters um, great music. Uh, you know, not much more I can say about that. Uh, nine would be after that. Um, nine was, was a pleasure. Um, and I know it has a lot of callbacks, but I still think it, it was a great game in and of itself. It's the best looking, I think of the PlayStation era. And I think that's a lot it's, going back to seven. I think that's one thing that kind of bugs me with seven is that, the qu- the quality of the the, pic- the pixel art is a lot better in nine than it is in seven. So if yeah. I should probably uh, pick up the uh, the PlayStation Four version, which it probably looks a lot better than the original PlayStation of that game. So I it'll be cleaned up, but it's not. It's all the character models still. The same. It looks better, but yeah, it's just yeah, it's just cleaner. It still looks like it's shit. still gonna look like Popeye. Yeah, <laughs> but it's there's some mods Popeye. though on the Steam version that's true yeah it's like slightly better <laughs> looking i guess <laughs> but yeah nine's a great game i can i can see why it's up so high on your list after that is five um you know i i it, it was a pleasurable game i like the fact that it's it's lighthearted and the story you know it's nothing too heavy um the job system was a change of pace um, I like the fact that, you know, the jobs are pretty spread out as well when you, you kind of obtain them versus like when you get, I think I remember in three, you get a, a class of jobs like at the very end of the game, which made no sense to me because you had like very little time to actually work on them before getting to the final dungeon. So I say like Geomancer or some crap like that. I think it was Evoker and yeah, something like that. Um, or or devout. <laughs> See, I don't even remember these jobs. So yeah. I'll, I'll take yeah. your word for it. <laughs> uh, so after five would be the original, the OG number one. Um, I still think it's got replay value. Um, you know, the the story is pretty bare bones, but you know, the customization of you know, you can kind of play the game through a, a bunch of different ways is, can be a fun experience if you're into that. Um, which, you know, it might be, you know, with the Forge Off Fiesta, that could be something else entirely, where some people play that game and have different, you know, four different characters and play it different ways. So, uh, after one would probably be three and then two, three and then two. Are those all the ones you've played then? Yes. Okay. I beat. That's, that's all the ones I've beaten. Okay. So no eight. No, no, it's another one that I've kind of started and yeah, just didn't get too far with it. So yeah, eight's, eight's a little tough. Um, as okay. So I I think, I think I'm I'm a little scared to 
based upon everything I've been told and read and listened to on the podcast, like the, uh, the, the enemies level up with you and then the draw system with the magic. It just seems like a little, little odd to me. It is, but there are abilities you need to get where you don't run into random enemies and you don't level up and the game's a lot easier. Okay. True. So. There are people, though, that disagree with us all the time. They're like, it's not that hard. You just got to you know, draw magic till your dying days. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I believe it. I believe if you have enough magic and enough man. good things attached to your weapons to keep your stats high, you'll probably it w- probably won't matter if everybody's level 99. It will be a very challenging game, though. I yeah. promise. It'll be beatable, but it will be difficult. Um, and it was always too difficult for me. I'd always get stuck in disc three somewhere. Yeah, same. <laughs> so, I just stopped playing it. It took me years to beat it. Eight's kind of like seven. Eight doesn't really get going until about disc three. But disc, unlike seven, disc three and four, or disc three is actually pretty substantial. Um, but like seven kind of has the Midgar part. Eight has a kind of a slog for the first half, I'd say, as far as like getting into it. Yeah. Um, although... Lots of people would disagree. People love that game, so I don't know. I'd still play it if I were you. Eventually, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I definitely am. I'm going to play all the ones I haven't um, get to it. I'm going to probably get to seven um, probably later this summer, you know, and definitely finish that. I meant to before we did this, but you know, again, I I wasn't having fun with it, so I just put it down, and I guess I just forgot about it. So. How dare you. <laughs> all right. Uh, are we going to do Step the Host twice? Yes, we are. All right. So we all know how this works. Five questions. Fundamop gets to go first on question one. He'll have a chance. Joe will have a chance. Then Fundamop will have one more chance, although I don't think he's going to need it. And then question two goes Joe, et cetera, et cetera. So first question up. How many Albed primers are in Final Fantasy X? Uh, there would be twenty six, same as the alphabet. Yes, yeah, it's it's kind of a you asshole. sort of a trick question ish because <laughs> it's like, oh shit, I don't know how many there were. But then if you think about what the primers are, you do know how many there were um, and are. So, good work. First question goes to Fun to Mop. One Thank you very zero. much for that softball. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem, uh, Joe. What is Setzer's last name in Final Fantasy VI? Setzer's last name in Final Fantasy VI. Yes. Uh, Setzer. Alka. Alka. Seltzer. Setzer. Yeah. Close, but no. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's not a real oh, guess. Okay. Setzer. Oh, shit. Is it ever mentioned in the game? I don't think so. I had to look this one up. I didn't know. Setzer. I think like in the guide it is. Or maybe the booklet that came with the game. Like their full names are all there. Uh, I'm thinking Cypher Almacy or whatever, but I don't think that's his last. Setzer Highwind. I don't fucking know. No. Uh, fun him up. Yeah, I, I, I remember like a lot of those characters have like Italian last names for whatever reason. Um, is it Gabbiani maybe? It is, yeah. What? It's totally Setzer Gaviani. <laughs> How do you remember that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, fun to mop. 2-0 lead, stealing Joe's, uh, stealing Joe's question here. Here's another another one that either of you might... Well, Joe might not, but... I guess no. Uh, fuck it. Let's do it. How many W items are available in Final Fantasy VII? How many W items can you obtain in the story? This question's for me, right? Yes, it's for you. Oh God! Um, ninety-nine. No. Okay. I mean, I guess technically, if you maxed it, no. Yeah, no that's I, what I was thinking of. Oh well, I mean, like to grab at level one. W items. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to go again, Mop? Because I no, no, I, I don't know. Okay. All right. Twelve. No. <laughs> All right, Mop. You got one more chance to. To seal this thing, honestly, at this point, it's not 12, and it's not 99. Oh, it's got so many other choices. I know. 
Mini. Uh, uh, Thirty. No, there are two. There's the one you get. <laughs> there's the one you get in the uh, subway system, and then there's also one that you can blast and obtain in the uh, the Bone Village. Oh my gosh! I should have yeah. known that. That one I I never have gotten, but I always I always grab the. The one to make the gameplay easier to get ninety nine mega elixirs, of course. Okay, now I understand your question more now that I know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. God damn it! Well, All right. At least he didn't get the point, right? <laughs> All right, Joe. What's the final boss's name in Final Fantasy Two? Two. Final Fantasy Two. The Emperor. Emperor what? Palpatine. <laughs> Close. Very, very close. Uh, damn it. All right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just said I'd say the Emperor. That's all. All right. Uh, fun him up. What do you got? Oh, man. I would. I just know Emperor. Um, I'm drawing a blank. I have no idea. It's brought back in Final Fantasy twelve as the Ice Esper, although you didn't play twelve. I don't know Joe did. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know what the hell the Ice Esper was called. Uh, it guess, wasn't Shiva. Oh, well, it certainly wasn't Shiva. Emperor Pandemonium. No, it's Emperor Matius. That's his name. Emperor Matius? Yep. Wait, that guy was the ice one? That's the ice one in 12, yeah. The chick. It's, her name's Matius. Oh. That's the only other thing I remember. That's not the fire one? No, nah, the fire one is Belias. Oh, okay. Now you're right. Okay. I know. I just played it. Damn it. Uh, all right. Well, it's two to nothing. Fun to mop with one question left, so it's inevitable. But I'll ask you anyway. What's the name of the airship in Final Fantasy III? Uh, oh, God. It's not God. <laughs> um... I was going to say Dreadnought, but I think that's from 2. Uh, I have no clue. All right, we'll pass it to Joe. I can only remember all the other airship names in the series right now. Ragnarok, High Wind. Okay, that's it. I, that's all I can remember. <laughs> yeah. The car. The car, yeah. <laughs> I remember the one from four now, but I, I don't think that would be the same one. You got nothing? Joe? I got nothing. All right, you can name the four one. I don't know. Maybe it is. I can't remember. Is it Falcon? No, no. Sorry. Okay. Uh, it's the Invincible. The is Invincible. It? Yeah, FF3s is the Invincible. Oh, shit. Kind of a cheesier... Light, more lighthearted name than some of the other like awesome ones, but it is kind of a lighthearted game. There you go. To begin with, so there you go. Fun to mop. Good work. Uh, winning this stump the host challenge. We really stumped the shit out of Joe. Yeah, I got zero. Although you would have gotten one, you would have gotten the primers. I bet. Maybe, but I would have thought ones that you picked up, like it was a trick question, not how many total primers. Like, oh, okay. I don't think you have to pick up all 26, do you? To understand the language, yeah. Really? Fully... All 26? Mm-hmm. I thought there was like some that you already knew, but maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> maybe. I but don't now, know. now my memory is messing with me, and I can't think about it. They might. There might be a way to learn it other way, other than the primers. I don't know. What do you do? You know, Fun to Mop? Because it's it's been a long time since I played the game without like having all the primers. I mean, you need like most of them to kind of get the language, but it's you know it's like Wheel of Fortune where you can kind of guess what what you know the phrase is if you have a lot of them, but you don't need them all to kind of guess what what's being said. You know, the vowels are important. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's fair. I guess it is. You can kind of get it, and plus, honestly, the dialogue that goes on is not that important, no, so it doesn't matter. Pretty much saying what you think they're saying, <laughs> which is unfortunate because then it makes the whole side quest of getting all the primers sort of moot. Like it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, you, you don't need to waste your time. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Fun to Mop. How did you find us? By by the way, I'm wondering. 
So, yeah, so I, I, it was probably about two years ago. Um, you know, I was just kind of searching iTunes, you know, I listened to, you know, different variety of podcasts, but I didn't, I haven't listened to any video game podcasts. So I just like, well, all right, well, what, what video games do I like? I like Final Fantasy. All right. So I searched that and it was you guys and I think another one. And I liked you guys a lot better. Um, and I've <laughs> stuck with you ever since. So. Well, we appreciate that. Um, we're, we're glad to be the better of the two <clears throat> that you ran across. Not to spoil, there are like now like eight Final Fantasy podcasts. <laughs> there are many. There's a lot that have popped up since we came up. Yeah. But not that we were the first, though. We no, were the, certainly not. We were like the fourth, but the second one that was still going. Yeah. So... I mean, outside of the review episodes, especially for game, it's kind of weird listening to a review of a game I haven't played or beaten. But I mean, the basic plot points I might remember, but a lot of what goes into the game I, I don't remember. So it's not going to spoil anything for me when I when I get to it and play it. But some of my favorite episodes are the topical discussions you guys have. Like the one that I, I really enjoyed, one of the first ones I remember listening to was, is your first Final Fantasy your favorite Final Fantasy? And, you know, I really... I really kind of analyze that one for myself to see, you know, is is it really true for me? And it's it's almost true, but not quite. So yeah, yeah that's kind of what the conclusion we we came to. It's like pretty <laughs> pretty true, but you know, it's, yeah, yeah. It depends. I think my the first one I played was eight, but the first one I beat was well, I knew the answer back then. But I think it was four or ten, one of those two. I yeah, I beat ten first, and then I beat seven that day. Yeah. So like I was at the very end and I was like, I want to beat this one first because I beat four ten and had my first kiss all in the same month. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's Final Fantasy f- is life, I guess. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it meant anything. Final but... <laughs> Fantasy is love. <laughs> it was November. I remember that. I remember the month. Well, yeah, don't remember the dates, but I remember the month. I was like, yes, first kiss and two Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah, this has been a good month. It's been a good month. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks, Fundamop. Really appreciate it. Are you doing anything um, on the onlines that you want people to know of? No, I mean, just if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's it's at Fundamop. Um, you know, I follow a bunch of people in the community. You know, that follow you. You know, that follow you guys and, and Geekdom Entertainment, New Clan, and all that. So, if you want to follow me, I'll give a follow back. You know, expand the community. Um, I really enjoyed, you know, interacting with people and you guys. And, you know, it's 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 fun. You know, it kind of takes away from, you know, the harsh realities of, you know, the world sometimes, you know, enjoying this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it's it's almost a breath of fresh air. And I, I, I want to thank you guys as well because I really appreciate what you're doing. You know, I like the fact that, you know, I found – an upstart podcast, you know, it wasn't something that was kind of, you know, established and you kind of made it your own. And this is, you know, this is pretty, pretty awesome what you guys are doing. So, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Doesn't always feel like that when I, you know, three weeks into a game and haven't started it, but (laughs) I'm glad that it still seems like that on the outside. (laughs) I'm like, I'm like, man, we've become like the procrastinator cast. Like ever since like, Final Fantasy 4, it's just been like, eh, you know, we'll get there. <laughs> get there. We'll beat it. That's not true. Sometimes we then, like, we'll, we'll take, like, eight months to beat one, and then we'll do, like... We'll do, like, one. three in a month. Yeah. Just, like, tear it up. Yeah. That's true. I think it averages say. is, like, one a month. We need to find, like, another comparative podcast that we can do, like, the... Because I know a lot of people give, uh, this is kind of off topic, but George R. R. Martin crap for his writing speed. Yeah. But then someone said, like, well, technically, for per word, it's he's as fast as J.K. Rowling. So we need to find a podcast that, like, has burned through all the Final Fantasies, and we see, like, per minute of podcast, you know, we are actually on par... <laughs> To finish these in we're not, time, we're not going to find that podcast twice. That's the problem: is that we, we are, are we that have podcast. done something that people have gone through the main series, but yeah, not everything, not the rest of it. And that's why that was the point of the show is because you couldn't find one to help you go through the main series as like a yeah. There was one, yeah. You know, the ones that I found weren't weren't all weren't all Final Fantasy. Yeah, and it was They were like our three favorites. Yeah, it was like it was honestly yeah. it's kind of like clickbait podcast in a way. It's like like oh, top 5 blah blah blah. It's like you get kind of that yeah. 
idea of what you wanted. They were always they were always talking about (laughs) podcasts that I had found, even the ones that weren't around anymore that stopped doing episodes and that don't really show up in the iTunes anymore. Um, They were always they were only pretty much talking about seven, and we have definitely probably had the most episodes on seven because it has the most content. Yeah, yeah. Um, just so many spinoffs and and uh, other pieces of media, but. It was always seven and ten, and then maybe six, and then they would bitch about thirteen, and at this point, I'm sure they would bitch about fifteen. So, yeah, that's usually yeah, how it's it is. Kind yeah. of like all all Final Fantasy podcasts were that. So I wanted something a little wider, a little wider reaching. And then we could bitch about thirteen as well. I wanted. I I say like I had a plan at the beginning. I didn't have a plan. This is a slow plan, plan over a few months. Yeah, this we didn't. Care. Yeah, at FF- the beginning we were like, oh, we got time. I think the first line in the first podcast, we got time this summer. Yeah, I think it might be, yeah. <laughs> uh, those Four are the years days. years later. Those were the days, yeah. having time. <laughs> but yeah, man, thank you so much. I'm glad glad you found the show. Um, thank you for all the support over the over the years, whether it's listening, um, supporting us on Patreon. All of it's great. Um, glad you enjoy the community. Hopefully we're able to see you on. I mean, I know you don't do much online gaming, but... As always, you guys can add me on PlayStation um, any old time, and I, I would love to play stuff with you guys if it if the stars ever align to the sure. point where we're playing the same thing. It's uh, Schweiss1, S-C-H-W-E-I-S-S-1. Uh, okay. Feel free to add me. I love hoarding friends. Just to, <laughs> Honestly, part of it is just to spy on people, just to see, like, okay, how many trophies does this guy have? Like, how hardcore is this person? Like, you don't um, have to worry about me in that category. So. <laughs> yeah. There are some that I should worry about but i know i'll never ever catch in this lifetime uh, and then there are some that i don't worry about so it's good. Oh, that's, that's pretty amazing because i thought you were hardcore no dude you have no idea there are people out there that destroy me in every every which way some of the listeners too it's always like and that's how i kind of gauge my progress it's like okay how much closer am i to to nave and it's like okay i'm not i'm not closer at all to to him, he's still a million times more powerful than me in every way. You know, I come up with niche ways to beat people. Like oh, I have a, <clears throat> a higher percentage of an average percentage higher of trophies, so I am winning. And then I look at people that also do that that have ten times the trophies. I'm like, shit. Uh, but yeah, it's always fun. Um, yeah, make sure you add me. We'll kind of keep in touch. And thanks for thanks for taking the time this Sunday morning afternoon for you to meet up and talk Final Fantasy. No problem. Uh, hopefully I can see you guys in person next year at KuboCon. If not, you know, but uh, you always have an uh, open invite. If you ever want to come to Philly, you know, I'll put you up, you know, take you around. You know, it's only 90 minutes from North Jersey. So if you guys want to do that next year instead of going to New York. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, my doors are always open. All right, we might we might hit you up on that. Yeah, we might. Uh, we might use and abuse. Once we once we have another letdown of pizza, we might be like, let's go get some cheesesteak, man. Absolutely, <laughs> we'll do the Rocky Steps, Liberty Bell, and cheesesteak all on me. Oh yeah, shit, that's right, Liberty <laughs> Bell. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll hit you up, uh, and hopefully we do see you then. All right, guys. So you can find the show at ultimatefinalfantasy dot com. You can uh, check out our Facebook page if you want, or. Uh, you can tweet me at Joseph Vigolier. Me at UFF Podcast. And Fun to Mop at Fun to Mop. Uh, and, um, yeah, if you want to support us on Patreon, there's a link on our website. And uh, we really appreciate the, the help. It, it pays for trips like going over to going over to KupoCon next year, which I, I am 90% sure I'm going. So that's, like, the big one I want to go to. Yeah. Um, and I'll definitely go. Yeah, Schweiss is going. But uh, I, I, I got to bring someone with me, so hopefully I can convince like Cameron or someone else to join. Because I don't want to go. F- I just I yeah, I just don't know where I'm going to be. So that's that's the yeah. only thing where it's like up in the air a little bit for yeah, me. Yeah, not a hundred percent. Yeah. But uh, I, I hope to be going to KubaCon. Uh, deeply hope to be going to KubaCon. Um. Anyways, guys, uh, we'll see you next time. Sounds good.
Enjoy the grind. <laughs>